service for holy baptism begins on page 299. Are we ready? <laughs> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God, kingdom, now and forever. There is one body and one spirit. There is one holy God all of us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Proverbs. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than gold or silver. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous and blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord pleads their cause and despoils of life those who despoil them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let's read together the psalm appointed. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but stands fast forever. The hills stand about Jerusalem. So does the Lord stand round about his people from this time forth forevermore. The scepter of the wicked shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the just, so that the just shall not put their hands to evil. Show your goodness, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are true of heart. As for those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with the evildoers, but peace be upon Israel. A reading from the letter of James. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please. While to the one who is poor you say, stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourself and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith? 
and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have the works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So by faith itself, if it has no works, is dead. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. From there Jesus set out and went around away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. 
yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. Jesus said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, what are we to say today on this, on this festival day for the baptism of Miles? What are we to say about the Christian journey and our part in it? Last evening, I was walking over to St. Margaret's Church in Belfast to attend one of their international dinners every month or so. They, they have a themed dinner and people make recipes from that particular country and last night was Mexican night. But I couldn't help as, uh, to just take in the sounds as I was walking by myself. My wife had gone to set up tables earlier. And there were all those wonderful sounds of late summer the crickets chirping away, birds, you know the, the kind of sound they make when they're get, getting ready to go to bed for the night, that kind of cooing sound. And so I, I went through, a, a, took a shortcut through a wooded section and, and suddenly I was startled by the sound of wings just kind of passing by. It was obviously a local resident who had been bedding down for the night. And I couldn't help but also think of the man who could not hear and had a speech impediment. I couldn't help but hear the words of Jesus, Afatha, be opened. We all know what loss of one's hearing can do. It can bring isolation to be sure. And in Jesus' day, Someone with a speech impediment, loss of hearing, was often judged and shunned as someone who was just not worthy to be part of the greater community. And so here in the gospel, this man is given back to his community. He's no longer shunned or put aside because of his lack of hearing and speech impediment. Jesus restores the man's hearing and restores him to life itself. And aren't you and I co-workers in that same vein? 
of which we work with Jesus to bring life, to restore life, to repair the breach, to be the people who bring light into darkness, hope, is that not part of our work? As I wrote to you uh, this past weekend, I said early Christians were often known as people of the way. People on the outside often said, oh, they are members of the way. And those followers of Christ also saw themselves as in the way. It indicates a journey, doesn't it? We're going somewhere. Going towards something rather than arriving at the destination. Does that make sense? So that sense of we're moving, we're going towards something, not having arrived. The suggestion of how things might be, right? Glimpsing those visions of the kingdom. What does the kingdom of God look like? And here we have in this letter of James, this kind of harsh letter to the church saying, well, look, you're going to pay attention to someone with money and you're going to ignore someone who has no resources. Well, in normal human society, that's exactly what happens. But how are we as Christians to be that inclusive community, that wide embrace that Jesus has? How are we to emulate our Lord in that work? You see, being part of the way beckons us onward. It reveals broad vistas. It's as if we get on, just climb up a little hill and there we look off in the distance. As time passed and the desire for security and certainly prevailed, the church came to look less like a way and more like an institution. With official recognition of Christianity as the state religion in the fourth century, the church gained strength and stability and there was a respite from persecution. But a vital spark was lost at that time as the desire to move and explore was gradually stifled by a preference for staying put. The artist David Hockney said of creativity, if you're not moving, then you're probably dead. And that goes for us as we seek our own place on the way of Christ. If once we cease moving and exploring, we will have lost our grasp on the fullness of life that should be ours. We shall find that we no longer run to the top of the nearest hill to gaze with excitement at new horizons beyond us and rather are just content to stay there in the valley. On the move, as God's people, we discover not just new sights and new encounters, but we really find our own identity. The Israelites, in their escape from slavery in Egypt, discovered God on the way, moving before them as, as a cloud by day and a fire by night. Only through the undertake, by undertaking this risky journey into the unknown did they encounter God. They found God on the road. The ark symbolizing for them the presence of God who had pitched his tent alongside them. Jesus kept on the move throughout his ministry, teaching those who followed that the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. This is a demanding road, and we can travel along it because Jesus has gone ahead. Jesus has marked the route for us. 
If you've ever taken a day hike on any of the numerous trails around here, you will sometimes find yourself a little perplexed when you've lost sight of those blazes on the trees and you wonder what's next. I'm here to tell you that we can look for and find with enormous relief the fresh input of a boot on the path that we follow. The journey of the baptismal life requires um, a proper map. Do you know what maps are? I, I was going to bring one and give one to Miles because I thought this generation has no idea what I'm talking about. Do you remember you used to get maps when you went to the gas station and filled up? And how did we ever find our way from A to B? But we did, right? And in a sense, it requires more of us, right? More investment of ourselves when we use a map. We have to orient it right. We have to look for landmarks. There's all sorts of involvement in us. It's no longer just pushing the button and saying, turn right. <laughs> and so that is sort of like the tradition of which Miles is becoming part of, of one learning to use a map and not just some satellite communication, an automatic system. As we know in the Christian journey, our path is never straight. It's more like sailing, right? You go back and forth to get to your point, your destination. And we shall need to check frequently our navigation points, ranging from the Holy Scriptures, the tradition of the church, and just plain old common sense. We just make sure we're on the right track. As people on the way, we hone our skills in navigating our way through life. This we do through daily prayer, our reading of the scriptures, and our learning simply to be still. We have huge resources at our disposal and a whole breadth and variety of Christian experience to draw on through history and across the world. Throughout our journeying, we remind ourselves that we won't be doing this alone. In fact, we aren't allowed to. Even our baptisms happen in public. This Christian journey is a group exercise. It is a shared venture. We can find ourselves caught up in a wonderful company of fellow travelers streaming along the road, a ragtag collection of all sorts of sizes and colors of humans, all heading the same way, glad of one another's company and appreciation of the different gifts that everyone brings to the party. Together, we're ready for anything. The poet William Blake once said, I walked the other evening to the end of the earth and touched the sky with my finger. We too are enabled to do just that when we, the community of the baptized, assemble every Sunday, not just to talk or listen or pray, but to actually touch holy things. And in so doing, to realize that we ourselves are the holy, beloved children of God, a little lower than the angels, crowned with glory and honor. Yes, that really does refer to you and to me. We are transformed by our life together in the assembly of faith. In our journey as disciples of Jesus, there will be moments, of course, of danger and fear or discouragement. We may turn aside for a moment or even begin to turn back. But when we waver, we remember, we remember that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses 
the glorious company who walk alongside us and those who have gone before us. Above all, we look to the one who has trodden this path before us, marking the way. Jesus has not sent us into the unknown, but onto a path that he has pioneered for us. He taught us much by his words and deeds, but above all, by his going the distance to his own great cost. He made everything, everything possible for those who follow. For the disciples of Jesus, our journey is not optional extra. It's not, it, it's not something we do if we enjoy travel. But it's a movement, a movement that's inseparable from our identity. This journey itself is a process of discovery and transformation, a process by which we appropriate patterns of belief and prayer and behavior that can give structure to our Christian life. The journey defines us. It's what we do. We are people of the way. And so in a few moments, we will welcome the newly baptized Miles Aiden to join us in this journey. stand. And at the bottom of page 301, the candidate for holy baptism will now be presented at the bottom of the page 301. I present. Would you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you by your prayers and witness help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I invite the congregation to stand. <laughs> And toward the bottom of page 303, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this child in his life in Christ? Amen. Let us join with him who is committing himself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of 
Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. And this is the vow that I said I would add to our service today. Will you cherish the wondrous works of God, protect and restore the beauty and integrity of all creation? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among the pe all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's We take a moment to offer to God our individual concerns and petitions at this time. Let us now pray for Miles, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Would you like to head back? Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-saving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Would you hold my book? Hold my book. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I'm hold it open. Yeah. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism in it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Miles Aiden, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
can hand me the oil in that little bottle and the dish under it. Yep, thank you. Miles, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit, Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Miles, receive the light of Christ. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessings, peace. You can blow that out so you don't light up. Nice. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. And just make your way. Peace. Hi. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Big celebration. Yeah, you can just make your way back. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Blessings. Peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Please have a seat for just a moment. A special welcome to our guests and visitors, especially to uh, family and friends of Miles to celebrate this great day in his life. Uh, also, uh, if you are just happen to be here today as a visitor, uh, there are information cards you'll find in the pew, uh, blue card that Hanani's holding up here, and feel free to fill that out if you'd like more information about St. Thomas. You can put it in the offering plate or give it to or uh, wherever. So, um, good. And Avery, you have a quick announcement? No, it's, we, we actually need to use the microphone, sorry. I know, yeah. All right, hello. My quick announcement is that we are going to be starting a children's chapel for all our preschool age, and we're going to kick it off next week. And mostly the parents will be the volunteers rotating in and out, but we would love for four people to come be our subs in case families are sick or can't um, sub. So if you are at all interested in being involved, and it'll be like, twos and threes year olds um, and there aren't that many it won't be it's a very easy lift but if you're at all interested in volunteering please come talk to me I would love to talk to you excellent thank you Avery is there anyone who'd like to come for birthday prayer anniversary intimidated by crowds <laughs> It's Susan, right? Okay, yes, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, and, and many of you may know Diane and Bobby. They're relatively new to our parish, have transferred here, and uh, we're so happy that you are with us on this journey. And she has a birthday coming up. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant, Diane, as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessings. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice unto God. Our offertory hymn is hymn 671. I invite you to stand to sing. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, 
who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. In your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. 
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
today is the first time in a long time that we have been able to send Eucharistic visitors out to the homebound. And um, uh, Doc and Hanani are going to be going out to jam locator this afternoon. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Let us stand and pray. On page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always.
in peace to love and serve the Lord.